Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Chi Feng Dai from Visual Computing Group of MSIA. Today, I will present our work called Deformable Convolutional Networks. The highlights of this work are the follows. Deformable convolex enabled effective modeling of spatial transformation in convolutional neural networks. It does not require additional supervision for learning the spatial transformation. It can significantly improve the accuracy for sophisticated computer vision tasks. And our code is also available on GitHub. A long-standing challenge in visual recognition is how to accommodate geometric variations or model geometric transformations. Such geometric variations widely exist in natural images, which may arise from difference in object scale, pose, viewpoint, and part deformation. In general, there are two ways for addressing this problem. The first is to build the training data sets with sufficient desired transformations. This is usually realized by augmenting the existing data samples, for example, by a fine transformation. The second is to use transformation invariant features and algorithms. This category subsumes many well-known techniques, such as SIFT, scale invariant feature transform, and sliding window-based object detection parallelism. There are two drawbacks in above ways. First, the geometric transformations are assumed fixed and lower. This assumption prevents generalization to real tasks possessing unknown geometric transformations, which cannot be properly modeled. Second, handcrafted design of invariant features and algorithms could be difficult or infeasible for overly complex transformations, even when they are lower. Recently, convolutional neural networks have achieved significant success for visual recognition tasks. Nevertheless, they still share the above two drawbacks. The limitation originates from the fixed geometric structure of CN modules. A convolution unit samples the input feature map at fixed locations. A ROI pooling layer separates a ROI into fixed spatial beams, etc. There lacks internal mechanisms to handle the geometric transformations. Spatial Transformer Networks, STN, is the first work to learn spatial transformation from data in a deep learning framework. It warps the feature maps via a global parametric transformation, such as a fine transformation. Such warping is expensive, and learning the transformation parameters is known difficult. STN has shown success in many small-scale small image classification problems, for example, MNIST. For complex vision tasks that require dense or semi-dense predictions, for example, semantic segmentation or object detection, STN is not feasible for such difficult tasks. In this work, we introduce two new modules, namely deformable convolution and deformable ROI pooling that greatly enhance CN's capability of modeling spa spatial transformations. The basic idea is that we learn to deform the sampling locations or spatial beams in the convolution or ROI modules, where the nerd deformation is adaptive to the image content. Compared with STN, it learns local, dense, and non-parametric transformation. The first is deformable convolution. It adds 2D offsets to the regular sampling locations in the standard convolution. It enables freeform deformation of the sampling grid. It is illustrated in the figure here. The offsets are learned from the preceding feature maps via additional convolutional layers. Thus, the deformation is conditioned on the input features in a local, dense, and adaptive manner. The second is deformable ROI pooling. It adds an offset to each beam position in the regular beam partition of the previous ROI pooling. Similarly, the offsets are learned from the preceding feature maps and the ROIs, enabling adaptive part localization for objects with different shapes. Both modules are lightweight. They add a small amount of parameters and computation for the offset learning. 
both modules have the same input and output as their plain versions. Hence, they can readily replace their plain counterparts in existing CNNs. In the training, these added convolution and fully collected layers for offset learning are initialized with zero weights. They are trained via backpropagation through the bilinear interpolation operation. The resulting CNNs are called deformable convolutes. The work is built on the idea of augmenting the spatial sampling locations in convolution and RF pooling with additional offsets and learning the offsets for the target task. When the deformable convolutional layers are stuck, the effect of composited deformation is profound. This is exemplified in the top figure here. More examples are shown in the bottom figure. Here, each image triplet shows the sampling locations for three activation units on the background, a small object, and a large object, uh, respectively. The effect of deformable RY pooling is similar as illustrated in the figures here. The regularity of the, R of the grid structure in standard RY pooling no longer holds. Instead, paths derive from the RY beams and move on to the nearby object foreground regions. The localization capability is enhanced, especially for long rigid objects. We performed extensive ablation experiments on VOC and cityscape dataset for object detection and semantic cementation. State-of-the-art semantic cementation and object detection systems are chosen as our baseline. In our first ablation, we replaced different numbers of regular convolutional layers by deformable convolution. The accuracy scores keep improving as we utilize more deformable convolutional layers, and it saturates among like between three to six layers. Next, we compare deformable complex versus dilated convolution. In dilated convolution, zeros are padded into the convolutional kernels according to a prefixed dilation value so as to increase the field of view for more context information. Compared to it, our deformable convolution achieves better performance by a clear margin. It enables the network to adaptively change its field of view according to the varying image content, and is much more advanced and principled. Someone may challenge that. Do deformable complex improve the performance by secretly adding a lot of computation in the offset branch? The answer is definitely no. The additional offset branch only adds very small additional parameters and the computational overhead. By enabling the network to model complex spatial transformation, deformable complex can significantly boost the accuracy by marginal computational and parameter overhead. Deformable complex are widely applicable for various algorithms and backbone network architectures. Here we show the results of deformable complex on object detection on COCO. On class aware RPN, fast RCN, and RFCN baselines with ResLet 101, we can get MAP score improvement up to three to five points. On higher baselines, such as FPN using ResLet 101, aligned inception ResLet, and aligned exception, the gap also holds. Finally, by combining the latest techniques, FPN and aligned exception, and the various tricks, we obtain a very high baseline up to 45.2 MAP. On top of it, by applying deformable complex, we can further increase score by around three points to 48.5. Also, at marginal parameter and computational overhead. This is a baseline for this year's COCO competition entry, this year, ours. And we would release more details in the COCO workshop to come. As a conclusion, we propose a deformable complex for dense spatial modeling. It is simple, efficient, deep, and end-to-end. -end. It does not require additional supervision to train the spatial transformation. We, for the first time, we demonstrated it is feasible and effective to model spatial transformation on sophisticated conservation tasks. Thanks a lot. Yeah, that's all. We have time for one question. Uh, 
Are there questions in Sala Perla? Uh, yes. Can I ask a question? Yes, please. Uh, thank you for a nice presentation. Um, I was wondering, uh, given a choice between using deformable um, convolution like the way you showed uh, versus um, using, let's say, two times the data or three times the data, uh, what would you prefer and why? Uh, so the, I didn't quite answer the question. So, so what, what's your two choice? Different convolution versus more data, right? Uh, versus you know large amounts of data with different D with different uh, trans yeah, transformations. Yeah, like if you were to use more data versus deformable convolution, what are the trade-offs? Uh, actually, I don't see there is any conflict between more data with varying trans transformations and uh, deformable convolution. Basically, uh, our our the form of complex, it enables the network to model the geometric variations uh, by, by itself. And it, and it can better exploit large amount of data with varying transformations. I think there, are no, there, are, there is no conflict uh, between these two points. The, the two combined together, the formal complex and uh, training data with uh, uh, a lot of training data with varying transformation, they can, when they combine together, the formal complex can better exploit, uh, can, can better model the training data so as to lead to better accuracy. That is uh, my understanding. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay.